What's going on everybody? In today's video, we're gonna be checking out how to build a very simple garden arch, or in my case, it's actually gonna be a wedding arch. I'm getting married soon and my fiance has requested that I build her a garden arch that she can put all kinds of pretty flowers on for our ceremony that we're going to get married under. So for this one, we're gonna check it out. It's very simple to do. You can follow along with this video if you wanna build one for yourself. After our wedding, we can throw it out in our yard as a nice decorative piece. It's only gonna be five pieces of lumber, four four by fours and one two by four and some assorted screws. So if you would like to do something like this, you can check out the description below. There's a Google Drive link down there where you can download the copy of these plans for yourself. I always make plans for everything I do before I actually build something to make sure everything is gonna fit nice together. So if you want those, check out the description down below. Let's go ahead and go through the plans and the tools you'll need before we get started. So this is what we're looking at as our final product. Like I said, very simple garden arch, just a cross beam at the top, two support beams on the side, the legs at the bottom, and some 45 degree supports. For this project, you'll only need basic woodworking tools. You'll need to start out with a miter saw, or some people call it a chop saw. You could also use a miter box, a drill, an impact driver, a random orbit or detail sander, saw horses, a measuring tape, a speed square, a drill bit set, Phillips screw bits, six point socket set, and this actually depends on lag screws that you get. Lag screws can come with a six point socket head on it, or they can be sometimes Phillips, and you'll need some paint and stain brushes. As for your materials needed, you will need four four by four by eights, three of them cut to seven foot lengths and one cut in half to four foot lengths, two two by four by eights. You'll need 12 six inch lag screws, 16 two and a half inch wood screws, 120 grit sanding discs for that orbital sander. You'll need some wood stain and some wood sealant. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started now. So the first thing that we wanna do is cut down our lumber to size aside from the two by four, we'll check that out later. So I have four of these, four four by fours. Three of them are gonna be cut to seven foot lengths and one is just gonna be cut in half for a four foot piece on both sides for the legs. So let's head outside and get these cut down to size. All right, so the first thing that we need to do here is cut our ports down. So seven feet is where I want this one at, 84 inches. So I just go ahead and make a mark there. And for this, I'm using a very small trim square. It's a trim speed square, very nice for boards like this. Four by fours, two by fours, one by fours, anything like that. Very nice tool to have. It's not big and bulky. We've got our mark there. Just go ahead and put the square on. And then we're just gonna make our line seven feet. We're gonna do this for all three of our first initial boards. Next one we'll cut at 48 inches or four feet. Alright, so before we cut this piece, a little tip here. If you're cutting on a line, make sure you want to cut just outside the line because the teeth on the blade are actually going to make your cut just a little bit shorter. So for seven feet, I want to cut on this side of my line. That way I'll be right at seven feet on this line. So first one, let's go. There you have it, seven feet, two more to go. All right, so now for this last one here, this one is gonna be for our legs. So these are the ones that are going to run horizontal on the ground and our support beams, or rather the sides of the arch that are gonna stick straight up from these. So these we only want 48 inches. Now you can be a stickler like me. These boards usually come at just a hair longer than an eighth. So once I get the other 48 cut out, I probably will trim that off. So they're nice 48 inch boards. So two of these, Right in half, trim the end off, good to go. All right, so we've got all our pieces cut out for the main frame of the board. We've got two for the horizontal pieces that are gonna be the supports. One that's gonna go on the top, it's gonna to stick out six inches on each side. And these are my two four foot pieces for the legs or the ground supports. 
Now we will get into how to reinforce these as well, which if you took a look at the plans already, you would see how we did that, but I will explain that after we get these put together. So the first thing that we wanna do for this is we're gonna go ahead and put together the uh, vertical supports on the sides and we're gonna attach the top cross beam to it. All right, so the first thing we wanna do here is we wanna mark out where our support beams are gonna go. And like I said, we want these offset in from, from the end six inches. So the first mark that we're gonna do here is we're gonna just measure right here, six inch mark. We're gonna make a mark there, get our little trim square, come over here and draw our line for that. All right, so there's that. So now what we have to do is we have to get the width of these boards. They're all the same. So I have the other two sitting over there. Now these boards are three and a half inches wide. Now they're supposed to be four by fours, but the common measurement is three and a half by three and a half. So we wanna come in from six, we wanna to go to nine and a half, make another mark here. We have nine and a half, and then we'll draw our line. So we know now that our support beam should sit in between these lines. So line that up perfect. We're gonna do this on the other side down here, and then we're all set to attach these. All right, before we start attaching the vertical posts to this, what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and make our holes in this that these are gonna go through. So these are six inch lag screws. They're very good, very strong holding screws, especially for something like this. So these will stick out, and if you drive them into the wood a little bit more, you'll get about three inches into the other board. So very secure. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do three. I'm gonna do one here, one here, and one here, just in a triangle pattern. Now, before you do this, pilot holes, incredibly important. I am a stickler about drilling pilot holes. So you wanna find a drill bit that's not as big as this, but pretty close to the same size-ish, so that the threads of the screw will have something to grab onto. Pilot holes, essentially what they do, they're gonna help you from splitting your wood. Now with a four x four, the chances of splitting this wood by driving this into it are very minimal, but I still like to do pilot holes. They make things a lot easier for lining up. It's just a great way to keep your wood from splitting as well as line stuff up. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a five, 30 seconds drill bit for this. Now I'm not sure if you can see this on the camera, but it's not quite as big as the screw itself, but it will give you a nice starting hole. All right, so we've got all our pilot holes drilled and everything. Now, before you start this, go ahead and put your lag screws in almost to the point where they're coming out. That way they're already in. You won't have to mess with going to get them after you've lined this up. Come back and you're like, oh man, I forgot my screws. So just go ahead, put those in before you start this process and you'll be good to go. So we have our lines here. This is where our board needs to go. Got our pilot holes, they're already there. So we just wanna move it into place. I'm just gonna shimmy it over. Make sure it is all nice and lined up. Now a trick for this spot here, if you don't care about a couple of holes being in your garden arch, which I certainly don't, it's gonna be outside. Plus when it gets stained, it's not gonna be that noticeable. Now what we're gonna do here, just so we can keep it in the right spot, we're just gonna grab a little scrap piece of wood and just send a couple screws through right here just to hold it into the right spot while we drive these in. Just pick some small screws, doesn't have to be anything super serious, you're gonna take them right back out so if you want to do that, entirely up to you. That is exactly what I'm going to do right now.
All right, so we've got our vertical supports for the legs. So now we're gonna do the horizontal part that's gonna sit on the ground, keep it nice and balanced. So for this one, since we have a nice 48 inch piece here, we know our middle point here is 24 inches. So that's our middle right there, 24. So because these boards are three and a half inches wide, we know that we're gonna to have to go inch and three quarters this way and an inch and three quarters this way. So we're gonna come over here to 25 and three fourths, we're gonna make a line, and then we're gonna come back here to 22 and a quarter, we're gonna make a line there. So that gives us three and a half inches there. So we'll grab our square, make our lines. There's one, and there is two. All right, so this is where our vertical supports are gonna sit. This is where we want them in between. So we have a nice centered vertical support. So we're gonna do the exact same thing we did with this one with our other support that's gonna go on the ground. Okay, now that we've got these marked out, same thing, we wanna do three pilot holes in this one because we're gonna we're gonna screw this with the lag screws from the bottom and go up into the other wood. So go ahead and get your pilot holes done and then we're gonna go ahead and attach these. All right, so now we're on to actually attaching the legs. So this is gonna be a little bit more of a difficult part. Now for me, I don't have a workbench or a table that is large enough for me to set this on and do this easier. So for me, what I'm doing is I am putting it up on a couple of saw horses. I've got one over there as well. And I'm also using my workbench to put pressure on it. So I just lead it up against the workbench on the other side, these on the saw horses, so they're sticking up nice. And all I'm gonna do is the same exact thing I did for the horizontal top piece, I'm gonna go ahead and take this here and I'm gonna pre-attach this. So I only have to do one while I'm holding this board up. All right, so that's on there. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this up, line the lines up and then drive this one in so it holds it so I can put my lag screws in and I will have this one attached and we'll do the other side, same exact thing. So here we are, so far. We still have a little bit to do, but this is the garden arch, basically what you're gonna end up with here. Now this is, uh, it's a little bit wobbly because of the lag screws on the bottom. They do stick out just a little bit. A way to fix that, if you would like to, is you can use a countersink bit to drill out a little bit of the wood and sink them in there farther. That would eliminate this, but for me, it's not a problem because it's gonna be outside in the grass. This isn't gonna matter. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to anchor this to the ground uh, and still keep it looking nice. So we'll check that out later. But as far as this goes, pretty good, not too bad so far. We've got to add some supports down here in the corners to give it a little bit more stability this way and that way as well. So let's check out how we're gonna do that. So remember in high school or college or wherever you learned it, the Pythagorean theorem? Well, that is actually where this comes into play. A lot of us said, we'll never use that. I don't need to know this. Why will I ever need the Pythagorean theorem? Well, if you're a woodworker or a carpenter, you actually use it all the time. You might just not know it. Now, how we're gonna figure this out is we need 45 degree angles here and down here. So what we wanna do here is we're just gonna measure this leg right here because this creates a triangle. Now, no matter what, a triangle's angles always add up to 180 degrees. So we have 90 here, 45, and 45 makes another 90 which is 180. So for this, all we need to know is how far it is from right here in this corner to the end of the board. Now you're gonna to wanna to measure this and make sure you get your cuts right because maybe if you missed a little bit here, lining it up or on the other side, it's gonna throw your measurement off. So don't immediately cut four 45 degree boards here that are gonna act as the support. Measure twice, cut once. It's always the way it has been because you'll end up with something shorter or way longer than you actually need, then you'll have to do it again. So I'm gonna measure from here to here, and that is gonna give me this leg. This leg is gonna be identical to that since we're using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, fortunately for us, remember those teachers said you're not gonna have a calculator everywhere. Well, guess what? Yes, we do. And it is your smartphone. And I'll show you right now how to use a Pythagorean theorem calculator. That way you don't actually have to do any math. So this website here is called Calculator Soup. I use this website all the time. 
It's a great website, has tons of different calculators, whether I'm using it to convert mixed numbers to decimals or decimals back to mixed numbers, or trying to calculate the hypotenuse of a triangle like we are right now. So for this, we're just gonna say for example's sake, let's say our leg is 12 inches. So 12 inches for side A, 12 inches for side B, that's both our legs. Hit calculate and it's gonna give us the hypotenuse of 16.9706 inches. Now that's very, very close to 17 inches. So we're just gonna round up to 17 inches. It's right there. You're really not gonna get any closer than that. So if our legs on our garden square were 12 inches, we would cut our 45 degree angles on the outside at 17 inches and they would fit just about perfect right in there. All right, so now that we've used our Pythagorean theorem calculator, we know exactly what we need as our legs. We need to cut some 45s. So for the 45s, we need this to be from the outside point to the outside point. That's where our length is, not inside to outside or inside to inside. It has to be from the inside, or I'm sorry, from the outside to the outside point. So first thing that I'm gonna do with my board here is I'm gonna cut my first 45 for this. Now for this one, what we wanna do here, we wanna lean the board up. We're gonna take our miter saw and we're gonna make our cut on the inside. So basically I'm gonna go ahead and measure out here just uh, a little bit extra, just so I don't have enough on the end. So 31 and 3 eighths is what I need for a total length. So I'm just gonna go ahead and measure out to um, say uh, 34 here, we'll do 34 inches. Um, so that's where my first cut is gonna be. Go ahead and switch this, flip it over to 45 degrees. We can also use our square for this, which by the way, that is a 45 degree angle right there, if you didn't know that. So we can go ahead, go out here, and just gonna go ahead and make our little line right there. There's our 45, the first one anyways. Let's go ahead and do this. Remember, make sure you cut on your outside of your line too. Always try to make it a habit to cut on the outside of the line. All right, so that is our first cut. So we have our board. Now what I was talking about from outside. So we need it from this side of the board, outside. Take that outside all the way over and we have 31 and 3 eighths, which is our length. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that. 31, one, two, three eighths right there. So there's that. Get our square, make our initial line here. So now we know that, and then we can flip the board up Use our 45 here, line that up with the mark we just made. And there's our 45 degree angle. I did that the wrong way, actually. So we need to make it opposite of what we just did. Make sure you check that as I just did. So we need to go that way. So now we have our angle right here. Not this one, this one's gonna get cut off. So we have our angle right there. So now we have this side going this way, so we want to make sure that this side is going that way, which saw is facing this way, so we'll go ahead and move this out of the way. Get our board lined up here, make sure, cut on the outside. at 45 degree angles and that's what we need now for me all of my cuts were perfect so i need four of these so i'll go ahead and do three more of these and get the rest of this built all right so now we have our corner supports cut so assuming we did our math right or rather the calculator did it right what should happen here is 45 degree right up to the end here and then we have a nice perfect fitment here so that's what you will be left with when your math is correct. Remember, measure twice, cut once. So then we'll have this on the exact same other side right here in this area, then we'll have one over there. So let's go ahead and get this attached. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make the holes to attach these supports to the legs. Now you could use a pocket hole jig here, but I don't really recommend it. You can take the time to set the pocket hole jig out, get it right, or you can just take the easier way out. So for this, I'm just gonna grab myself a drill bit. For this, I'm gonna use a 7 64th drill bit just to get myself a nice little hole going. Uh, so for this, very easy to do. So we're gonna put two screws here, two screws here, keep it nice and tight. Now for this, what you wanna do is you wanna come in just about, about an inch and a half or so, you can estimate, roughly estimate here. Now when you do this, you're just gonna start your hole just a little bit here, and that'll allow you to turn the drill about 45 degree angle, and then you're gonna wanna punch through. So there we have a nice little hole. That's gonna hold very nicely. So we wanna do this four times on each board, both sides. So I gotta do several more holes, 16 in all, for all four pieces of these. So I'll go ahead and get these done. All right, so now we can go ahead and attach these. We've got our holes in each side. So we're gonna go ahead and set it up, put it right up to the end here. Now for this part, you can use something to kind of keep the, uh, Keep it where you need to go. For me, I'm actually just gonna use my shoe. All right, so here we go, put my shoe here. Make sure it doesn't move on me. Hold it up top and go ahead and drive these in. And that's it. So we have a nice support here. Not gonna go anywhere. Very sturdy, very, very sturdy. Now, do this three more times and you're all set. All right, so everything's put together. This is it. This is your very simple garden arch. Something easy to build, very easy to build with just common tools, inexpensive tools that you have laying around. There's no need to go out and spend three or $400 on an arch that was built exactly the way I just showed you. All of this lumber here, unfortunately with the cost of lumber right now, cost me about $85. So 85 bucks to build this rather than spend three or $400 on one that has already been built and yeah, just a little bit of skills. So for the rest of this now, what I have to do is I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up a little bit. Some of the wood is a little dirty, so I'm gonna sand it off, get it ready for the stain. We're gonna go with an espresso stain and a warm gloss oil-based polyurethane to keep it nice while it's out in the yard. It can get rained on, snowed on, can go through the weather. Make sure you seal your wood, especially this, it's not pressure treated wood. So you have to seal it with something that'll help it withstand the elements. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand it, stain it, and polyurethane it, and then we'll check it out when it's all done. All right, so it has now been a couple of days since I finished this and stained it. I went with the Espresso Minwax. It's an oil-based stain. Soaks into the wood very nicely, gives it a nice, dark, deep color. Now, obviously, you can use anything you want, but if you like this color, I just wanted to let you know what it is. After this, now I'm gonna be sealing it with a polyurethane. I'm gonna go with the oil-based Minwax Warm Gloss, and that's gonna give it a nice sheen out in the sunshine. It'll look pretty good, nice and shiny. And if that's not your thing, you can also choose to do a satin or a flat, just as long as you seal it, it is gonna be outside. So you have to get it sealed, otherwise the weather will get to it in no time, rot the wood, it'll fall apart. We don't want that after we spent all this time making a nice garden arch. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal this and we'll check it out tomorrow, see what it looks like when it's dry. All right, another day has passed and the polyurethane is completely dry in the sunshine, it is beautiful. I did the warm gloss, again, you saw that in a little bit ago in the video, and it just turned out absolutely incredible. But if the warm gloss is not your thing, by all means, you can pick a satin or a flat. Now, if you want this to be a little bit shinier than you see it here, after you do this first coat, let it dry, come back with some 300 or 400 grit sandpaper, wet sand it off, and then apply another polyurethane coat. You can do that as many times as you want to get it as glossy as you want. But for me, this is just perfect. It's gonna do great for our wedding. All right, so remember earlier in the video, I told you I was gonna show you guys how to anchor this into the ground. 
This is all you're going to need for that. Once you have finished this, you found a spot in your garden or your yard, wherever you want to put this, what you'll need is a drill with a 5 16 inch drill bit. 5 16 inch is 1 16 inch smaller than this. You'll want to get four pieces of 3 8 inch rebar, two feet long each. You'll take your drill. You're going to want to take off your 45 degree support posts here, punch holes in your four by fours on both sides at the end. Once you get the holes drilled, you'll take your tight bond, and this is the interior exterior water resistant. You wanna pour some of that glue down in that hole. You're gonna grab your rebar and your hammer, and you're gonna hammer it all the way down until it is flush with the four by four here. Four of these in each of the corners here on the support posts, you're gonna be fine. It will not go anywhere. Assuming you're not in a very high wind zone, if you are in a high wind zone, I would suggest doing two of these in each of the legs for a total of eight. So that's it guys. That is gonna be the build video for this garden arch. I hope that you've enjoyed it and I hope that you have learned something from this video. In the future, I'm gonna be doing more construction videos, more woodworking videos like this. The next project that I'm gonna take on is building a bar with recessed lighting and reclaimed wood also for our wedding. So that should be a lot of fun. I'm gonna get started on that soon. Once again, thanks for watching the video, guys. If you liked it, don't forget to tap the like button down below. And if you want to see more like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you have any suggestions on something you'd like to see me build or something to tinker around with, leave it in the comments below, and I'll see if I can get to it eventually. With that, I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy, everybody.